What the fuck? Hello and welcome to another Beer Clever video. This video showcases the build process I've been through for the post-apocalyptic truck build, which I've been doing not as part of the vlogs for the past couple of months. I have had so much fun with this build, I can't tell you, and I really hope that you enjoy watching the video. Let me know in the comments below what you think, if you are inspired to do anything like this yourself. This is part of a challenge for the Tabletop Dungeoneers Discord, which you can join. There is a link in the description below. Come and join us. And there will be other videos which I will attempt to collate and link to all in the description below as well, if I can. So um, you can go and check and see what the other people have done who have entered it and there are some pretty cool ones out there I can tell you. So without any further ado let's go back to about two months ago when I started this and uh, let's see what I've done. As part of the Tabletop Dungeoneers Discord one of the guys there just randomly suggested a challenge which everyone has jumped on including me and I'm really excited about it. Now the challenge is to build a post-apocalyptic uh, car diorama or just car but I'm doing a diorama uh, in 124 scale or 75 millimeter which is a scale that I've not done before and I'm actually really excited about so I've kind of ordered a load of stuff which is on its way it doesn't have to be finished this project until the end of January so I've got a bit of time but for the first few items have started to land so I thought I'd quickly just show what I've got uh, and talk through what the rough idea will be um, and then as the uh, items arrive then I'll be able to start working on it but I'm not going to start until I receive the actual truck. So what has arrived are three of the figures, there are a few more coming as well. We've got a passenger with a dog that will be sitting in the truck. Um, we've got a guy with his foot up, I'm not sure exactly where he's going to go. He may not end up being used in the diorama but it was cheap and cool so I bought him anyway. And then we've got Mike here who is going to be driving the truck. So they are very, very simple kits. I'll pull one of them out just to show you, just one second. So there you are. You can see that they're very, very simple kits. I mean, they'll take me about all of three minutes to stick together. But they're really nice. I'm actually really pleased with them that they're simple because I don't want to be spending lots and lots of time gluing individual fingers on. <laughs> um, so having it like this is great. With the dog, though, I'm not entirely sure how that dog is supposed to sit in the front of a truck doesn't really look like it's a sitting dog like this picture is but you know whatever <laughs> um, the girl is obviously sitting down you can see her legs are bent um, and yeah I'm I'm going to be sticking these together I'm not going to start gluing anything until I've got all of the items so that I can actually position and make sure I don't need to do any conversion work there's no point in making work for myself the truck I've got is like a curtain side but not a, a HGV 18 wheeler um, and uh, I'm going to be able to do some really cool stuff to that, I think, to make it post-apocalyptic, a little bit of Mad Maxi. So yeah, a project starting. I mean, I just really can't help myself, can I? <laughs> First of all, we have this dude here. A lot of these have come from China, um, and uh, I'm pretty happy with them, actually. There's going to be a little bit of cleanup needed, but they're, they're pretty cool bits of kit. This guy has a, is holding one dude by his hair, <laughs> he's got a head dangling by a hair, and he's got an axe. And there's a little bit of cleanup going to be needed, you can see there's a mould line there, um, and what have you, but it's actually quite a nice little, little sculpt. So he is potentially going to be in the diorama. I should say that this is going to be a diorama build. So let me get the next one. This next one is a female version of that. So you can see that um, this is a little more modern. Um, so she has a couple of guns that will be in her hands um, and um, has trainers and what have you in a top knot hair, dark hair style. Um, so she's another one that will be in the diorama. Next up we have my little alien figure which I'm particularly pleased with. And you can see I have actually had a little bit of a fettle with this just to see how well it fitted together. And I am actually, say, as I say, pretty impressed with these. It fits together very, very nicely, this. And this is definitely going to be in the diorama. Some of the other miniatures may not end up in it. Um, but this one definitely will. It's a really cool, like, cyborg-y type thing, which is going to be quite menacing. And I'll tuck away somewhere um, to give the impression that that is what the people driving Mr. Volvo are running away from. So let's get the next one. So some of these I've already shown on the uh, vlog. So this is one of the passengers, um, a sleeping girl. 
Then we have a sitting girl and a dog. So you can see my uh, light. <laughs> and then we have the driver, Mike. Mike Barrington, Mike Beach Boy Barrington. <laughs> And then we have a dude standing with his foot up on something. So we've got quite a lot of figures. There's actually two more still to come, um, but that probably will, will definitely dress the stage well enough. Other items that I've got, I have a um, ICB, which will be in the back of the truck. I may need to order more of them, but uh, I won't be able to get them in time. It's taken that long for these things to arrive. I also have some stickers, so you can see zombie apocalypse infected region, warning, quarantine signs, zombies inside, enter your, your own risk, hungry zombies, warning biohazard. So yeah, so these are going to be pretty cool for dressing up the scene. And on top of that, I've also got some other stickers um, with like warning stickers and death and what have you, danger, radio actions, active stickers as well, fuel signs. So they, this will be quite good for dressing up the scenery as well. Um, and the last couple of bits and pieces I have, I've got some jerry cans and some oil, bar oil barrels, which can go in the back of the truck also. And finally, and I don't know whether I'll get to this, this is a real stretch of my skills, I picked up a couple of like LEDs that are inside, um, like um, I can mount to the truck hopefully uh, as, as floodlights. That was my idea for that. So, like you say, as you can see, I've got quite a lot of stuff which is uh, which I've gathered together for this. I'm very very excited, and I will be um, n will be putting some effort into this, but I will not be appearing in the uh, vlog again for another few weeks until it's finished and I've revealed it uh, so that I don't so it's a big surprise for everyone but uh, yeah I'm looking forward to it quite a lot and I think that it will hopefully be be quite a good nice looking diorama but uh, the actual truck is going to be quite a stretch it's a very detailed um, bit of kit the instructions are a book and they're quite involved so hopefully this won't be too much for me to do in the time i've got available anyway we shall see onwards so as i've said this build is not going to be done in my usual way of filming i'm going to do it in a more of a vlog style for the build video it's just going to be too huge it will, it will be hours and it would also take a long time for me to a um, lot longer to do it with trying to keep in shot so i'm just going to do it in a vlog style so first of all this is the uh, first day of actually working on it i've taken everything out of the box as you can see I've had a look at all the sprues, which are really, really cool. And I'm going to start to look at assembling panel one and maybe a little more, but at least panel one, I'm going to have a look at doing this evening. I need to crack on with this. I, I don't have a huge amount of time. Um, I do have until the end of, um, of, Feb of February now, not January, but I'd still like to try to do it for January so I don't delay everyone else um, who is waiting for me. It is a bit of an involved build though. It has, um, all these pages of instructions and 16 steps uh, particularly if i'm going to do the elevator which i may or may not do i'm not sure i might have it half up half down make it look a bit knackered and broken uh, but the first thing that you're looking at doing is a engine so i'm going to grab that out and glue it together and I'll bring you back at the end of the evening and show you what I've achieved. The other thing that I might do is have a look at some of the resin kits that I've got, basically wash them and leave them to dry because I can't do anything until they've been washed. So I'll get them out and scrub them in hot soapy water and dry them off. And then I can maybe start gluing those together and start attacking those mod those models as well. So yeah, onwards, it's gonna be a really, really big build. Um, I hope that you enjoy this video, a uh, slightly different style to what I normally do. Um, but yeah, the, the, uh, the this this Volvo is only for a very small part of the build because I also have a diorama to build around it. So yeah, it's not just the kit. Anyway, onwards. It's the end of the uh, my time this evening for the first day of the build and I've done okay, but I've, <laughs> I've had a fun time. So I've made the engine block, which went together really nicely. Um, I'll need to be painting that tomorrow probably. And I've also done, I believe these are probably uh, air brakes or uh, petrol tanks or something like that. So I've also done those. And then what I've done is I've come on to the next step, all still on panel one. Now this involves taking two parts, um, part 14H and part 13B joined together. However, not how they are on the sprue. You have to cut them down and glue them together and you end up with this bit of waste here, which I can't see where it's used. It's all very strange. 
and I am hoping, oh no, that's not the waste, this is the waste. <laughs> You know, this bit of waste here. Now I'm hoping I've not made a mistake. And you can see in front of me, I've got a ruler here because this is two, this is a section and this is a section and they're glued together and I've taken a spare piece of sprue kind of to try and reinforce it, which is what it suggests. It's a bit insane. I don't understand why they don't come to the right lengths on, on the sprues unless there's many different types of truck that all have roughly the same chassis. And this is just a standard sprue that they make for four or five different kits and it's cheaper for them to do it that way and they don't care that it confuses the hell out of me. Anyway, I'm enjoying it. It's a new challenge, but new challenges are good. As you know, I love challenges. So yeah, um, I think I'm going to leave it there. Um, I've only done half of this side of the chassis. Um, I'm going to sleep on it, let that set. In the morning I'll do the other half. So we'll take this piece here cut it down, take this piece here, cut it down and glue them together. And then that'll be a good thing to do first thing in the morning and then tomorrow evening and get back to it. Um, but yeah, good fun. Um, <laughs> so hopefully I'm not making mistakes. <laughs> I've made some progress on this. I have put together the three resin models from China. And also I have put together the sleeping girl, which is gonna be in the back of the truck. So what I'm going to do now is put a little bit of skin colour on the ones that need skin colour and just start painting them up because I need to get this done. Um, and so yeah, I may as well do it. So I've got a little bit of time now. I'm going to um, get an early night. Uh, but while I'm down here and the, the thing is hot, I've just finished my 20 minutes. Uh, while the heater's on, I'm going to get some colour on those. I've got three other miniatures from the same range as this to make and two more resin miniatures coming from China. But um, yeah, I've no idea when they'll arrive. So uh, we'll see. I'm just going to carry on as if this is the only ones I've got. Um, obviously, I've got the driver, the passenger, the dog, um, and the man with his foot up, which may not even go on the diorama. He might be parked. But yeah, I'm going to do a little bit of painting on these miniatures this evening. Um, I've not touched the actual kit since the last update, uh, but um, that will have to be uh, got back to probably in the next couple of days. Otherwise, I'll rapidly find myself running out of time. So a little bit of a progress report on this. It's taken me a lot longer than I expected, but where I'm at now is finally ready to start to glue together all of panel one. I've done some painting. I've actually gone and spray primed all of the sprues, which I don't normally do, but this is a big project and I've, I think it was worthwhile doing. Um, so what I now need to do is glue each of these in place. That's how that works with the engine block between the chassis. And then I've got all of these little bits and pieces which are gonna go in between like this um, and I've got a couple that I've left on the sprue so I can remember the, the uh, remember the numbering uh, once this is glued together I'll start to assemble uh, number two and also I will probably come along and do a bit of a wash and a grime up on this engine because that is very clean at the moment as you can see and not really yeah not really looking very prototypical at all but yeah you can see that it does go together quite nicely actually once you work out these strange cutting sections that's where i cut and joined it not perfectly but it's good enough um, and it seems to be secure um so yeah it's uh yeah, it's, it's ongoing. Um, I will bring you back when I've got something more exciting to show. Um, another thing to say is I did receive another of my characters. This is the woman in a big great coat who is carrying a rifle. However, it looks like you can make her to be only wearing her pants. <laughs> I love, I love these. This scale is just full of filth. Anyway, um, yeah, so I'll be um, putting that to that one together and painting that one up as well, and I'll show you what it looks like. Um, but yeah, slow progress, slower than I wanted, but yeah, I think we'll finally have a chassis by the end of today, and maybe even we will have some suspension. This first batch of miniatures is actually coming along quite nicely, including right in front of the camera and not very well focused, the um, Samsonite kind of like briefcase whatever that's going to be on the truck so this dude here is pretty much done i've just washed him this evening so done his um done his stain um and this one is also done this guard um she's pretty much done i think i'm not gonna do much more to her and finally the 
robot thing is done. I did another sheen on that. I really am pleased with how that's come out. So Sleeping Girl is very nearly done. I'm not sure if I might do something more to her or not, but she's looking pretty good. The only one that's really got much left to do is this one, which I need to do another couple of coats on the skin. Um, and also I need to paint her rifle, which I have forgotten about. <laughs> and then the dog, which I won't touch because that's very wet. Pretty happy with that. I'm not great at painting animals, but they're coming out well. So there's a little bit of an in progress on the figures for the diorama. Um, and upstairs, the truck is going very, very slowly, but it is moving. I've not stopped, I am still building. And I really hope that in the next week or so, I'm gonna be able to start putting this all together and actually assembling a diorama. I've still got to finish assembling and paint the driver and his wife, uh, but I want to wait until I see the cockpit or the cab of the truck make sure they're all going to fit in i'm not going to have to do any kind of cutting and shutting on those to get them to fit so i'm waiting a bit for that uh, before i start them and they won't take too long anyway so yeah good progress i have been continuing on this um i'm just uh, I, I think probably my video for this will pick up interest once i start coming to the diorama and the arrangement as you can see, I've made quite a lot of progress on the truck and I'm quite pleased with how it's coming along. I'm just getting to the point now where I'm gonna to start to actually convert it for the post-apocalyptic thing for the actual diorama. Pretty much everything I've done up to this point has been following the instructions. I do have another of these kits, which I'll probably build and film a little bit closer, but um, yeah, this is the first time I've done one of these. So I wanted to practice a bit, but as I'm now coming to the conversion bit, I'll put these, um, I'll pop the camera on a bit more and show you what I'm doing. So you can see there a section of the curtain side that I've actually trimmed out the middle and I have the rest of them over here so I've got one here which I'm about to do I'm going to cut so that you have this section cut out and then other than that the other sections which are over here are going to be a little bit more complex because I'm going to need to cut out and leave this central upright because that um, is how I'm going to uh, basically secure I'm going to have it so that it's got a metal upright here and a metal upright in the middle and then one at the end I think so I'm using my Dremel I'm being very careful Careful. I do not yet have my bench hook. Sorry about that, Leslie. <laughs> I know you're going to whinge, but I'm being very, very careful with my little cutting block, which I use, um, and I've got my glasses as well, as you can see. So I'm being very, very careful, and I'm just doing it very, very cautiously, um, using my grinder to grind out the metal, and then a little bit of a um, of sanding to take the burrs off. And I think it's going to look fine, particularly when I uh, when I paint it up. That will look fine. So I'm going to finish doing this, then I'll glue them all together. So I'll glue them onto the, ba the base. This is the bottom of the trailer and this is the lid. And then what I'll do is I'll probably give that a prime straight away. Um, and then I'm going to make use of some materials I've got. Let me just grab it. <clears throat> So there we are. So these are materials we've got. These are actually um, used in plastering. So they reinforce the corners. So I'll cut some of these out and I'll be able to use, you can see they're the right dimensions. The yellow one is particularly, I'll be able to put that as kind of a, um, a mesh, which is gonna be over, so a wire mesh over the curtains um, and rather than it being just just like a canvas it's actually reinforced with metal uh, and i'll be doing the same sort of thing um, over the front of the cab and over any glass but anyway we'll come to that i'm enjoying this build a lot but i don't have all that much long left and so i'm going to crack on with it and i'll bring you along probably once i've finished all this and i'm about to start applying the special stuff and uh, hopefully it's going to it's going to work well um, really really hope so anyway We've just had a power cut, so um, I'm taking a brief pause from work, hoping it's going to come back. We've actually had two. It came out very quickly the first time, so hopefully we'll be back the second time. <clears throat> I just thought I'd quickly show you where I'm at. So what I've managed to do is actually progress the trimming out and uh, the removal of the panels. As you can see, I've actually finished, just finished that now um, using the grinding tool from the Dremel, which worked okay actually. I got better and better at it. If I did this again, there would be, there would be even better. And what I'm now trying to do very, very carefully is glue it in place, which is actually a humongous faff. <laughs> And I'm just gonna have to do it really, really gently and carefully um, without feeling pressured. So running the camera is probably a bad idea, but whatever. So just thought I'd show you where the progress is. So what I will be doing is putting this together in, um, so gluing these sides to the base. You can see that I've got one end on now. 
Um, I'm using the um, plastic cement even though a lot of it will evaporate because it will come back in once it's roughly held in place and add some more um, but yeah this is this is a bit of a faff a bit awkward so I thought I'd run the camera I'll stop talking now and let's see whether we can get this situated This is fiddly. Right, I'm going to turn the camera off now and do the other cut other edges slowly, get them right. This is important to get right. Um, and then I'll bring you back when it's done, show you the next step. All right, it's time to start customising. I've been looking forward to doing this. So I'm at this point now where I think I'm happy to stop following the instructions and start cutting and shutting and doing stupid things. So the first thing that I've spotted are these sections here. Now I'm not entirely sure what they were supposed to be for, my theory is that the sprues in this truck can make more than one truck. If you follow different instructions, then you get a different truck. Uh, I base that on the fact that I've had to cut and uh, shorten the wheelbase and all sorts of other jobbies, which is a bit frustrating. It's made it more complicated than it needed to be, but it has resulted in this sprue entirely stuffed full of cool things I can use to customise my build. So the first thing that I'm going to do here is I'm going to take these, I'll clean them up and glue them on off camera, uh, but I thought I'd just bring you along for each idea I have very, very quick, um, show you how it's going to work. And I'm going to stick that on here at a height so that when it's sat on, it's not going to absolutely run along the floor. So yeah, that's going to look okay. You can't see that on the, on, on the camera. I've just offered that up uh, to the uh, truck and it's going to be able to be glued on there and I'll be able to fill around it. Um, maybe I'll do it the other way around because that's got a bit of a curve so that might work better there. Um, so yeah, I'm going to glue those on basically at that height there. And then I'm going to put some uh, other material across here and make it as a kind of spiky serrated um, thing that they've stuck on the front of their truck uh, to clear the way and make sure that anything in their way gets cut up and doesn't stop them. So that's gonna be the first uh, thing I'm gonna do. So I'm gonna do that now and uh, then I'm gonna have a look through that and see if there's anything else I can do uh, based on this sprue, which I'm pretty sure there is. There's some pretty cool wheels and what have you, which I can um, at least stick together, paint and have stacked up in the back as uh, spare wheels or what have you. So yeah, onwards. As you can see, these are glued on looking fine now. So the next thing that I'm going to do is going to make use of some corrugated cardboard and I'm going to stick some on um, and I'm probably going to end up making a little framework behind it because I'm going to want it to like kind of come out a bit so that the wheels can still turn. Um, I mean, the old other thing I could do is I could do it curved, but I think flat makes more sense. So I'm just going to glue it on underneath where the door is to the top cab again um, and cut it here. Um, so yeah, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do that next and I'm going to do that on both sides. So we'll have some corrugated cardboard stuck to the bottom of the cab um, and as I said, maybe a little bit of, a, um, of support been put, will be put in as well just to make it a little bit less, uh, a little bit, little bit more rigid, but I'm not sure, sure how I'm going to do that. So I'll play with that and I'll show you. Um, and then I'm going to stop on the cab and I'm going to start working on the back and uh, I'll bring you along when I get to that. I've also been assembling uh, some spare wheels and things so they can be used to scatter in the back and what have you maybe hang them down from chains to protect things um, if we swing over a little bit you can see that we're also definitely going to need to be putting some corrugation over the fuel tank and by these wheels because this truck is uh, not going to be heavily armed in terms of offensive it's more going to be defensive so think corrugated to iron and uh, grids of steel and just the paid guards keeping the enemies uh, and, and being the offensive weapon so yeah so corrugated card here and possibly down the side at the back um, and then i'll bring you back when i come to the next step this is coming on really nicely very very pleased with how this is working so what i'm doing now is i'm gonna stick this ladder to the back of the cab it's another thing that came with the kit that's obviously useful for maybe an hgv or whatever 
but that's going to mean that I can then potentially put something on the roof, maybe a gun mount or something is what I'm thinking, um, and that will give access for them to climb up. So yeah, just little bits and pieces like this being done now. Um, I'm getting close to being able to start painting and assembling, and then I can start on the actual diorama, which is really doubly exciting. Um, so I think the next thing to do is to look at the actual mesh around the back uh, of the uh, back of the of the truck and uh, get that stuck on if I can, and then I can go and prime it and start to paint it. So I've taken the mesh, which <coughs> I showed before, and uh, I've cut it out to shape. Um, and uh, with a little bit of thought and help from Quinn, I've decided from Quinn's Project Crafts, go check him out if you haven't already. Um, I think the inside is the way to do it. I could have put it on top, um, so on the outside like this, or on the inside, and I think on the inside looks better. So this is where the experiment really starts to go off. What I'm going to be trying to do is glue that in place, and hopefully it will glue. I don't know if it will. We'll find out. Um, so yes, I'm going to going to give that give that a try now. Uh, I'm initially going to try with super glue. Obviously, um, if that doesn't work, then I am wondering whether actually putting lumps of some. Um, um, putty or even some of the other types of more solid glue I've got uh, might work but first of all I'm going to try with super glue so I'll give that a go and I'll let you know how it goes. The super glue experiment was a relative success as you can see it is gaping a little bit but it is stuck in um, and that's cool uh, but what I'm going to do I think for the rest of them <coughs> certainly for this side um, and I'm probably going to do a rolled up one up here, uh, so that might be a bit different, but I'll probably stick it on with this. Is I'm going to use Milliput, I'm going to see if that will work. So I'm just currently uh, kneading it all together, as you have to do. Um, and what I'm going to do is make very thin sausage, run a very thin sausage all the way along here, down inside, down the centre, and along the bottom, and then press this, which I've cut out, for the right size on top of it and see whether that fixes it because yeah the glue is, um, is is just not quite good enough and if that does seem to be working then I'll probably come along and stick the, that gaping bit in place with some uh, milliput over the top so um, <clears throat> I won't do all of this on camera because it's going to be very very repetitive but basically we've got ourselves some milliput it's nicely um, it's, a, it's a good consistent colour which is what they say um, and I'm just going to get this done I've got a few minutes before I've got a meeting um, so if I can get this done now it can be sitting all day going off and then this evening it means I'll be ready to start painting which is really cool so yeah so what we're going to do is we're going to come along press it in all the way around the model like this and then we will drop the actual uh, mesh on top and press it press it down so I'll get that done and then when all of this is done and the, the milliput is all around the edges I will um, bring it back and show you what it looks like and we'll see whether it's going to work or not this is another voyage of discovery with beard when I'm working on things I always like to um show them to Angela even though she's not really all that interested but she has some really really good points and one of them was this slab which I'm going to be putting down over the front of the truck would actually cause the engine to explode uh, if it was there all the time so what I'm going to do I've come up with an idea that I'm going to carve in slats so it looks like it can the slats can be opened to allow a good airflow through um, and then if you're in a particularly risky place like they are driving through on my diorama you can close the slats down so like go from that to that and then obviously the air will be restricted you won't be able to run like that for very long however there is some air intake um, and I might end up putting little much smaller gaps through so if like a bullet goes through then whatever but it's going to stop a rocket um, I'm not sure but I'm, or I might perforate it slightly but at the first stage I'm going to just do it like that so I'll, so the way to do this and the way that I'm going to do this is I've got my craft knife and a steel ruler and a sl slats are going to be they're going to come from a side um, so they're going to have a, a like a be able to rotate they're going to be pivoting in the sides and rotating like this so down each side of this slab yeah, um, is going to be a beam and then going across the slab is going to be the slats so I'm deciding at the moment whether I'm going to actually glue a thin piece of plastic on top on the side but either way what I'm going to do is I'm going to very carefully score in the 
edge of where I want those slats to be. So I'll do that with the sharp edge of the knife and then I'll come along with the blunt edge to make it wider. And I might come along, I played around a bit with the uh, little Dremel, I might come along with a Dremel and attempt to make that wider once I've finished doing all of this basic carving with the sharp knife. So um, yeah, so once I've got the sides on, which I'll just do, There we are. So that's the side. That's what they That's where the slats will slot into. What I'll do is I'll do exactly the same thing, um, but I'm actually go, I'm going to measure. I want this to be straight. Uh, so that's six and a half. So we'll put a slat at one. We'll do them a centimeter. That means that the bottom can be a solid be solid and then I'm gonna I'll, I'll score across in exactly the same way um, and get the slats in in an obvious <coughs> preparatory for painting um, I'm gonna have a bit of a play around as I said with the Dremel and if I do end up deciding to use the Dremel then I'll bring you along and show you how that works um, um, I, you will need to have this nicely clamped um, and run the Dremel down, it's not actually a Dremel is it, the uh, rotary tool, down the edge of a, uh, of a ruler, otherwise it just goes all over the place as you can kind of see back here. Anyway, I'll get that done and I'll bring you along when I've finished to show you what it looks like. So I finished doing that with the knife. Um, and now I'm going to have a play around with the Dremel, so or the, this Tack Life tool. Now this was something recommended to me by Quinion from uh, Quinion's Budget Crafts, um, and it's really cool. It's very cheap, um, and it's a lot easier to handle than the big Dremel, though of course it isn't as powerful. But in this case, that's a good thing. So this isn't going to sound nice, so I am going to put my uh, music on and um, mute the sound so that it doesn't give you a headache. But basically what I've been able to do, and I've proven it with one, <coughs> so I'll show you with the next one, is I'm going to be able to use this to deepen these lines and to make them a little bit more pronounced. So here comes some music and then I'll turn this on. And there we are, we have a really, really pronounced line, which is gonna look a lot like slats. I'm really, really pleased with that. So I'll get the rest of this done. Um, I think I will probably put myself a little bit of plastic here, here and here um, as, the, uh, as the outline. And then when that's done, I'll be able to glue that on. Um, I can use these tools to maybe put some dents and dents in it. I've got different sizes, so it can look like it has actually absorbed some, uh, some bullets in the past um, but yeah we're cracking on with this now i'm really really enjoying it and i'm really pleased with the conversions they have this a lot of fun this is coming up really nicely now i think i'm getting close to uh, finishing up uh, the additions i'm really undecided about the gun on the roof uh, so i probably will leave that uh, but what i've got is this is the um, form that uh, the um, mesh was ripped off and when i saw it i suddenly realized that i can mount it like this under here and it will act as a uh, like a bulldozer type of thing um, and uh, will work really really well for that which is which was surprising because I hadn't planned that I'm not sure what way I'm going to do it whether I'm going to do it like this or whether I'm going to do it like that uh, but what I'll do is I'll cut it out to shape <coughs> and then work out how I'm going to attach it and then, and then glue it on. The other thing that I really need to resolve uh, now is, let me just turn this around briefly, is this gap here at the side. Uh, there's a gap where the front armour, um, this kind of slats thing here, um, and that's not very good at all. So I might just put mesh over that, I think, uh, because it's going to be air, um, air intake. So I might just mesh that up, um, but I'm not totally sure. I'm just going to work that out at the moment. Um, and there's another little bit here which I probably need needs to put a bit of uh, across the front here below the um, uh, below the windshield and of course I need to get the windshield in which I might not be able to now <laughs> but I may need to glue that windshield in very shortly uh, so yeah really good progress uh, very shortly I will be uh, looking at painting this and um, then building the diorama which is very very exciting that's looking great now so the next thing and I am really now starting to get to the end of this this conversion <coughs> is to put these girders on here to uh, reinforce the wh where this beam comes up here and attach it to the side of the truck. The idea here being that they've basically just jury rigged this 
Um, it's not designed or supposed to look like it's very well made, but just good enough to kind of protect them from any anything that might be on the road in front of them, whether, wherever they're going to, uh, which you'll find out shortly when we come to build the diorama. So I'm just going to use super glue just to glue that in place, and I'll do the other side as well. The only thing really left that I'm still having an iron is this space here. I'm not sure what to do. Oh, and I did actually have something else arrive. Uh, I may end up putting a gun on top because unexpectedly I'd ordered these and thought, no, what with the deliveries, it's just not going to arrive. These are actually Typhoon guns. So I think they're World War II um, from Edouard. Um, they're resin guns and they are 124 scale. So they're the correct scale. So they are absolutely beautiful. Um, I will do a proper unboxing as well, separately to this video to show these off. Um, but yeah, really, really, really cool looking bits of kit um, with uh, big heavy guns. Um, so I might very well end up mounting those to the uh, top of this truck so that when the people are climbing up the ladder on the back, there is going to be like a gun turret on the top or something, or I might just mount all four pointing forwards. I'm not sure. I might do a turret. I might. Um, we'll, we'll play around. But yeah, there'll be a couple of guns on top of the roof, um, which they can use as a little bit of a defensive uh, armory. Uh, but the point is of this build is to not have lots and lots of guns on it. Um, it's more defensive. So, uh, but I will definitely <laughs> consider using them because they look absolutely sweet. A decision has been made about this bit here. Uh, I've got these little parts that I've not used elsewhere. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to glue them in just at an angle there. So coming up from this cross piece and across onto the front portion. And then that <coughs> will be that done. And I will then go prime everything and then start to paint. And I'll obviously let you know how, what I do and decide to do on that when I come to it. Um, but for now, that's, uh, that's going to be the final bit I'm going to glue on this, I think. Now comes the fun part. So here you can see, probably for the first time, I think this is the base of the truck with the two, with the driver and the passenger. Um, she's going to have some sunglasses on top of her head and a mobile phone in her hand. Um, but <clears throat> that's how the truck will be set, I think. And this is the base, which I'm going to do for the diorama. It's a um, 30 centimeter uh, by 60 centimeter, I think. I'm not sure, I think it's 30 by 60. Looks about right, yeah. So it's just a, a relatively small shelf, but it will be fitted, it will mount nicely on my display area. Um, and I think that this is the direction that we'll be looking at it. So the truck will be coming and turning. You can see, you won't be able to see the wheels, <laughs> funnily enough, because of how um, there's, there's a defensive uh, stuff over it, which is a bit of a shame in a sense, but I, at least I'll know. I have this bit of wood, which I saved from outside, um, and that is going to sit just about here. So the truck, the track, the truck is going to be on a track, easy for me to say, which is going to come here and then turn sharply uh, in that direction. So um, I'm thinking that there'll be a pile of rocks here as well. So you can't really see because my arm, there'll be a pile of rocks here. So it's going to be quite a tight kind of like turn for them to get round. And just here, tucked in behind this bit of wood, which is refusing to stand up. I have tried to blue tack it in place, but it's just not working. So um, unfortunately, he's gonna be standing the crazy dude with the hat, with the, with the beheaded head. So he's gonna be stood there. That's gonna be quite a clear threat. And at the back of the board, I think in some bushes or whatever, is gonna be the alien robot type person. And the question will be, are they in cahoots? Are they working together? Or is this potentially tracking down either the driver and this truck or even the crazy dude in the corner. So this will be looking pretty much straight at the crazy dude, I think that's, that's going to be the point. There'll be some bushes, like I say, here. There'll be a rocky outcrop here. This, this will be here. Uh, the tree will be on this corner and the track will come like that. Sharp turn. So that's the plan. What I'm going to do first is I'm going to glue some thin foam to this board um, or I might do cork. I'm not sure. Maybe I'll do cork to be honest and then I can build on top of that um, and draw what I want to on top of that and I think that'll work quite nicely. So I've got my plan. I'm now going to start to uh, do it. So let's uh, get some cork or whatever material. I'll work it out and uh, we will start to build up the terrain for this piece. Downstairs, the back of the truck is being painted at the moment. I'm just using aerosols at the moment to 
get some base colors down and then the front of the cab as well and then we'll put it all together and uh, that will and then i'll be able to also diorama diorama the back with all the dressings that are going to go into the back of the truck so i'll get some materials together and i'll bring you along and show you how i'm going to do it all all right it's time to start putting this diorama together so what i've just done is i've got a few bits and pieces i've done a bit of playing around and i got to the point where i'm getting close to wanting to actually um, stick things together and start cutting things out so what we're going to have is Back here, this is going to be a cliff, as I think I've already mentioned. And I've got a couple of bits of bark, which I'm going to use. And we're going to have the cliff looking something like that. <clears throat> so the truck will be coming along here. There'll be a very steep cliff here. I've got some more bark down on the front corner, which I'm going to bed in with the modeling compound. And that's going to be a rocky outcropping. And then here, we're going to have uh, two sections of lumps, big old lumps of tree. So that one will be there. Um, which has clearly been cut so that it can clear away for the um, <clears throat> for the track and then we'll have this other lump of wood in the front I think there just to kind of add a little bit more of interesting cover because behind here is where crazy dude with the uh, the beheaded <laughs> the, the crazy beheading dude is so to get this done it's basically going to be pretty much a flat uh, within uh, which I won't need to worry about filling in too much but the space behind here I want to do with some white foam just so I'm not wasting modeling compound There's, I don't want to use all the modeling compound to build up to these levels so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this mark out and cut on this white foam here and just use this to fill in behind and then texture over the top of it and that will give me that structure there so that's the thing that I'm about to do now I'm just going to make use for the proxon um, and I'll glue them on with gator glue and clamp it all in place and let it dry um, and I'll probably glue this down as well uh, but I probably won't glue this in uh, yet because I want that to be more sat on top of the uh, compound I might press into the compound when I'm doing the compound work and I'll show that so the first thing I'm going to do is get this cliff done and um, glue that in place and then I can come along with the compound and that will be good. So we'll crack it on, I'm going to get that done and I'll bring you along for the next step. While the diorama sets up in the background, we're coming to the, the telling part, which is I'm going to start to glue and I'm gluing on the back truck bed to the back of the truck. As you can see, the truck front, the cab is on, that's not glued in place. I've left that so that I can take it out because I may make some changes. Um, and I just don't think there's any point in gluing things in that don't need to stay glued in. But this definitely does want to be glued on the back, otherwise it will be a little bit uh, difficult to move around. And I'm also going to be dressing this anyway, so it makes sense to have it glued in, because it's going to have quite a lot of stuff in the back, which will also be glued down. So just run a bead of PVA or a bead of super glue along this. One problem is, is I've already painted this, so it won't, it will come off if I really want it to. This won't be the most secure gluing ever, but it'll be good enough for this. It's a diorama that's going to be attached to a wall on a shelf. <clears throat> and this is actually quite fiddly to do, so I don't think it will just drop in place. The cardboard actually does get in the way quite a bit, and I have to kind of like fettle around to get it to sit. But it does fit in, so I will stop filming because I'm going to start really getting dug in, and I'll get that set, and then when I'm coming to actually do the dressing behind this, then um, I will bring you along for that as well. So this is glued down and this is now secured. You can see that what I did, I had some leftover grout, black grout mix in the fridge, um, which I, I'm pleased I saved because while I didn't need it for the original project it was for, I've been able now to do the black underneath this outcropping because I'm gonna have that as an open kind of like crack. And then there's gonna be a couple of cave entrances here as well. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna come along. I'm actually gonna use PVA because I don't want to have the expanding foam uh, coming out and spoiling things. So I'm just gonna use some PVA to glue these rock pieces in place. And then when they're done, I'll be able to come along. I'll paint, I'll mix black paint in with my modeling compound and I will build up the rest of the rocky outcrop with that. So I'm going to do that now just with some PVA uh, and when that's done I'm coming to the next step I will bring you along. So this is dry enough now for me to do the next step and that's going to be coming along with a hot wire cutter and just shaving down along this so that I can then put some uh, modeling compound in and finish off this little bit of, of rocky outcrop. So we're just going to come along very smooth and cut that out and hopefully it's going to work it might not because I've put all of that 
black stuff on, which does seem to be the case. So I might have to just go on the top of the black stuff like that. <coughs> and I might need to come and do that without the hot wire cutter, which is a bit annoying, or do it very slowly. There we are. <coughs> okay, so that's going to be the line, because I'm not going to fight that black stuff. I will fill that in, make it a little bit uh, taller than I was planning, but that's fine, I'll roll with that. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to mix up some modelling compound, and I'm going to build up over the top of this, behind this uh, upright here, around the back, just make it all solid. Um, I'll do that now and let that go off overnight. I'm not going to mix any paint in with it. Uh, there's no point I'll come along with the black paint and paint over it afterwards. So I've done a bit up here. I'm going to let that go off a little bit more um, and do it in small stages just because I want to have something solid to attach it to, uh, especially over this overhang. And I've also, as you see, started to work on the front um, and putting some of the Luke's compound around this rocky outcrop. So I'm actually going to continue with the modelling compound and uh, just build up the terrain all around the edges so along the front here all along here and right the way to the back um, I might even end up gluing this uh, sticking this tree down um, which is uh, going going to be in the old compound and then as I've said I think I'm going to push just press that in and move it out um, leave an indent, indent and then I can work around that um, that, that actual log um, with the with with my flock and my static grass so yes, yeah, so I'm going to continue on, uh, just uh, build up a bit more. I'm not sure how much more I'm going to do tonight, but I haven't had a particularly productive evening. So um, I feel that this will be good for me to do some, a little bit more on this, even if it's only another 20 minutes or so. So yeah, let's see for, how far we get <coughs> building up the terrain around the outside. This is all dried now nicely. So I'm going to come along and do the next step. The next step is some grout mix. So this is a different color than I've used on any other project. It's actually called light brown and it's a nice red dusty look, which is exactly what I wanted for most of the rocks, not for this rock, but for most of the rocks as well. So I've made a mix up. Um, I may end up having to use a bigger brush because this might take me a long time with this tiny one. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint it all over everything. I'm going to paint it on the track. I'm going to paint it on the dirt here. And then I can build up from that with the rest of the scenic materials. So yeah, I'm going to get this done. I uh, will, uh, Pop some music on and you can uh, watch me paint it. So I left this couple of days, just been busy. Uh, what I'm going to do now is going to come along with my dark grey and paint this rock with it. Because I want this rock to stand out. If it doesn't like what it looks like, I can always come back and paint it a different colour. But my kind of idea is that it's a little bit out of place in this location. For whatever reason, it's out of place. So this is not a attempted a dry brush where I normally use this grey for dry brushing over black. This is very much 
painting it grey. So I'll do that, let that dry, and then I'll come along and dry brush it with the white and maybe some other odd colours as well, like I like to do. And we'll see how whether I like it or not, and if I do, I'll keep it, and if I don't, then I'll bin it. <coughs> so there we are, the, uh, the grey rock. Next up, I'm going to add some texture to this outcropping. I'm using this uh, tempera gauche, which is just brown. I bought this in Belgium when I first got into my hobbying, and I still have so much of it left. I will be very sad when it runs out. And I'm going to do this as a dry brush. So I've got my dry brush brush. We'll take most of the paint off. And I'm just going to come along and dry brush over the rock just to bring out some textures and to add some interest, which it's a bit flat at the moment, that. So just to add a little bit of something. And what I might end up doing is some yellows and some other warm colours on this as well. So yeah, very, very simple technique. <clears throat> and that's already added something, I think. Hopefully you can see that well enough. Might need a little bit more. There we are. Okay. So the next step is to let that go off and have a look and see whether I want to add some yellows to it. I have a couple of other colours. I have my very, very favourite dark red, which I might do a little bit of actually. This I use a lot for roofs and bricks. I'll do this in a couple of places. I just want to really make this look a bit barren and a bit scary. So that's nice. And then I've got this lovely, totally dried up, kind of like mustard. See if I can get something out of that. Yes, so I can come in on that. Probably need to buy some more of that paint. The lid has obviously not been on properly. I did get quite a lot out of it though. There we are, we're getting some really nice variation in there now. It's still very subtle, but subtle is good. Okay, and then last but not least, I have a very much brighter yellow, which needs a good stir. So I'll stir that up and dry brush that on, and I'll bring you back when um, I've got it a little bit more done and I'll get a better angle and better lighting. There we are, really interesting, nice colours. So I've come in with the yellow all over the base, uh, the brighter yellow, and I've gone for a little bit heavier on the red, as you can see here, and also along the track, just to bring out that, uh, that texture. So what I've also got is some chicken bones, which uh, were uh, collected together and have been used in other projects, like the, um, uh, the kind of Disney crossover thing that I'm doing. <coughs> Uh, for the Terrain Crafters United Discord. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to glue them down. I'm just umming and ahhing about which glue to use, whether I'm going to use super glue or that basing glue. I think I'm going to use super glue. I think it's going to be a little bit easier for me to do. So I will um, get those glued in place. I've got just some, a couple of ribs and, and, and another uh, odd bone type fragment. So we'll just literally glue them in place nicely there. I've got this weird looking bone, which is actually part of the, uh, the backbone of the chicken. These are chicken bones from a roast chicken that we had that I massively overcooked <laughs> when I was trying to make sure there was nothing in them that was going to cause any problems. So they are quite brittle, so they're better for this sort of thing than for gaming terrain because they're just too brittle really to use but they'll be fine on this because it's not going to get handled 
So there we are. So I'll let the, I'm not going to do too much, just a few bones, just as little interesting bits of scatter. Uh, so when that's dried, <coughs> and this is when this is dried and they've gone off, what I'm going to do is going to come along with some small bits of the um, of greenery, just to add highlights and make a little bit more interest. Uh, some dried, uh, um, some dead grass tufts and that sort of thing, um, and maybe a bush or two. Um, and then I will glue down this, and then I will stick the actual figures in place. So. Crazy dude, and the uh, robot will be go over here, and then the only thing left to do is finish dressing the truck, and I need to make some more barrels, so I'll bring you along for that. While I've been waiting for this to dry and uh, considering a few other things, I've spent a little bit of time uh, pulling off some unused parts from the sprue for the truck and uh, gluing together those that need to be glued. There's one thing here particularly which is going to go on the truck, that's a uh, fire extinguisher, but the rest I'm just going to spray paint silver and dirty up and then I will scatter around this area um, as detritus and rubbish that's there from, uh, from the trucks going past and being attacked by said crazy dude who is currently kind of, just you can see his feet, he's in shot just about. Um, he will be eventually be standing around here um, obviously he'll be glued so he won't fall over, um, but that's where Crazy Dude is stood, just there behind the tree. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go and take this downstairs and give it a spray with silver um, and then a spray with red and black and all sorts of other crazy colours just to make it all dirty and gunky. And then I'll come back and I'll position it, including a broken wing mirror, uh, windscreen wiper, um, a bunch of uh, some, some like pipes from exhaust, um, some wheels and... Here we have the Michelin Man. <laughs> well, I'm going to paint white um, and dirty up, and then that will also get uh, get positioned in here somewhere. So yeah, some nice fun dressing to do here. I'll go and get that done. I'll bring you back for the next step. Some other details. I picked up these diorama accessories from ETA um, from uh, eBay, and I'm looking through picking out the ones I'm going to use. Um, there's actually not all that many I can use, they're all very much about zombies which might end up being on a future diorama or whatever but they won't get too paced, I'll keep them. But I'm thinking about that warning biohazard one maybe um, and then I have actually already started looking at some of these and I've cut one out which I'll show you when it's on the board. But we've got air raid shelter which I might put, I might stick on as well. So I'm going to just cut a few of these out, warning biohazard, that's a, see that's a pretty cool one that's generic. So yeah, so I'm going to have a look at this, um, stick a few of these on um, around the board. Um, if I just pan the camera very slowly over, what we can see is over here, I have started the process of mounting one. So I've got a couple of bits of, of lengths of uh, wire um, and I have glued that to the sign. So I'm going to do bits and pieces like that uh, as well. Um, and then dress up the rest of this diorama with these signs. Well, there we are. We've got our uh, all of our bits and pieces that I've uh, sprayed, painted. Um, they're not glued down yet. I've just been positioning them roughly. I've got my sign, quarantine, no entry or removal. So, of course, what I'm going to do is have it leaning up against that uh, rock, that, 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 that uh, log there, because it's been removed. <laughs> I have not yet decided what other signs. I want a sign on the front of this here. Um, and I want a sign over here. I've not yet decided. I've not decided whether I'm going to go with the zombie apocalypse thing. I could do, to be honest, because he could be a, a, a zombie hunter, and so could the robot. They may not be um, actually. Uh, they might be in competition, but he, he might not be hunting anyone. So yes, I'm, I'm still undecided, but I am starting to think that I might put some of these zombie signs up a little a few more of these zombie signs up just just for fun um, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna glue all of these in place I'm pretty happy with with my positioning I think it looks nice there's a bit of pile here there's a little pile here I think it looks quite well <coughs> and when the truck is in it certainly looks well talking of which I'll go and get the truck and I'll show you what it looks like so there we are here's the truck in situ you can see that uh, it does actually obscure the rock quite a lot, but that's fine. Um, I'm not going to glue the, the truck down, so the truck will always be able to be removed. Um, I've not yet finished dressing the back. You've just got some miniatures and what have you that are stuck in there. However, what I have done is I've added a little golden cross on the back, like as a prayer to the gods. So, yeah, so that's a nice little detail. I also have added 
uh, an extra exhaust here there wasn't an exhaust on it before so using some of the spare parts I've dragged that cool looking exhaust and tucked it in behind there so I'm pretty pleased with how that looks uh, so yeah, that's where, that's the truck. Um, it's not far off done. I need to dress the back, which means I need to make some more tanks, some more oil ga ga uh, cans, because I've only got two. They are they are awesome, but I've only got two, so I need to make some more. So I'm working on how I'm going to do that. So yeah, um, I'm going to position all of the detritus, glue it down, and then I'll probably come back to this tomorrow to do the tufts and the final finishing on the base. Um, and then all I'll be left is finishing off the uh, the, the population in the back. Uh, so I've got <clears throat> this particular young lady um, who is going to be stood on the platform here. I've got this uh, guard. She is a obviously a robot. Um, she is going to be in here guarding. And uh, in the back I've got the sleeping girl and I've got the dog here as well who's going to be watching over her. Um, so yes, yeah, so I've got a, quite a cool little vignette to do on the truck. Um, and uh, obviously I've also got to just put things in there. Um, I'm thinking about maybe having a little bit of an awning or something, I don't know. Maybe an awning over her tied to the, uh, tied to the, um, the tank here. IBC, that's what it's called, the IBC. So yeah, yeah, lot, lot, lot still to do, but I'm really not far off finished, so pretty, pretty happy. So I need some more barrels for the back of my truck. And what I've done, I've looked around and I found these old, which we're not going to use anymore. They're actually curtain rails. They're rubbish. We hate them, <laughs> so we've taken them down everywhere where we had them. That's the inside one there. The ones that they slide in and out of each other kind of thing. And what I've got in here is I've got my little uh, rig here for doing cross cuts and um, I've got the outer one which is slightly larger <clears throat> and a hacksaw. And this is very noisy and I may not be able to do much more than just one now because I really don't want to wake Rosie up. It is the evening. But I'm going to be cutting out using this hacksaw some lengths of this, of this pipe and then I'll be able to turn them into some drums of some sort and I think that'll work really well. Uh, what I do want to say is that this is obviously a problem for the larger scale. Um, both Miller's Marvelous Miniatures and Quinian's Budget, Budget Crafts have superb videos which I will attempt to remember to link in the description and also pop on screen around this area of the video uh, for making them for the gas lands so a much smaller scale 164 as opposed to 124 but for the 124 scale i've needed to be a bit creative um, and i think that this is going to work well so i'm going to cut these out it makes a horrendous noise so i won't really invite you along to watch so i'll put some music on and uh, you can see how long it takes Well, there we are, that took me a few minutes, and it's very, very difficult to keep that straight. However, I think that's going to be fine. Um, what I'll do is I will cut a few more out, and then I'll bring you along and show you how I'm going to put the ends on, um, and then I'll be quite happy with those. So there we are, I think that's going to work all right. I might end up um, looking at a different tool that uh, is not very good. It's a very flexible blade, and so it was twisting um, and causing the cut to not be straight. But I did get there in the end. It is smaller. <coughs> as you can see, than the 3D printed ones that I bought for this. But that's fine, because um, they can just be a different type of barrel. So yeah, onwards. I've continued to cut down the uh, tube, and I've been using the Dremel, as you can see. And I have been wearing my eye protection, which is very important, because sparks of metal hitting you in the eyes would be a very bad day. And what I'm going to do now is just show you how I'm going about doing the uh, cap. And I'm only doing one side because I might put a tarpaulin over them or something, I'm not sure. But I'm just going to do one side. So what I do is I put some PVA around the rim of the tube that I've cut. And then very simply shove it through. <laughs> like so. And with a bit of a twist, it will go right the way through. And there you have a cap on the end of your barrel. So I've got a few of these now. <clears throat> I'm probably going to cut a few more, but I'm just stopped now to let the general cool off. So I thought I'd just quickly get the actual caps done. Um, and yeah, I'm pr pretty pleased with how this is going. I think these are going to look really good in the back of the uh, back of the truck. Um, so yeah, so I'm going to make a few more, and then I'm going to start doing the absolute final dressing of the truck. So it's time to start gluing things down on here. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to glue down my branch here, this log, and I have the um, little 
kind of den indentation I made in the actual base, um, which will mean that it sits in nice, quite nicely. So we'll just put some PVA there, and that should be enough to hold it in place. The good thing with this being a diorama <coughs> and not playable, don't have to worry quite so much about how hard wearing everything is. So that should that should be pretty good. <coughs> The next thing that I'm going to do, I'm actually going to uh, put some PVA in and get a brush. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to stick the sign down. So, um, just put some PVA on the plate over here. And the sign is going to be leaning up like that. So, <clears throat> we'll be able to stick that down with some PVA there and some PVA there. And if it needs more than that, <coughs> excuse me, I've got quite a bad cough. If it needs more than that, then I can come along and add it another time. But that should be sufficient for that as well. It's poking over the front a little bit. Let's move a little bit further back. There we are. Again, because this is a diorama, I don't need to worry about it being incredibly hard wearing. It just needs to needs to not blow off basically in a, in a breeze so there we are that's the sign there so the next thing that I'm going to be doing is looking at <coughs> excuse me this cough really is doing my head and I apologize for coughing at you on the microphone the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to stick the crazy dude so the lunatic uh, dude I'm going to stick down with PVA as well and that's going to mean that if I decide to move him then I can but he's going to be standing like that as you can see he stands up pretty naturally already so if I coat the, his feet with PVA, then that will stick. Again, sufficient for a diorama a shelf. Just means he won't blow over. There we are, that's perfect. So we've got Crazy Dude in there. So the next thing that I'll be looking at doing is, I've got the rest of these signs. I'm gonna cut a few out and I'm gonna start to plaster them on the actual truck. So I've got one here, attention, shoot zombies in the head. I'm gonna put that one on the, on the truck bed there. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to put uh, infected people will be shot um, on the back here. I'm just going to cut a few of these out and stick them on over the truck. So I'm going to do the cutting out now um, and then I'll just stick them on with PVA um, and I'll show you how I do that when I get to it. Okay I've done some cutting and what I've got is I've got the attention shoot zombies in the head label here and that I am going to stick on the back of the truck right there. I have danger, zombie outbreak, warning, military escort required. That is the one that's going to be stuck on the end of the um, of the trunk there. And then I've got a biohazard infectious waste sticker which we're going to put on the back of the of the truck. So I'll glue those in place with a PVA and then I'm going to have another look through and see what else I can get. I think I'm going to put the Quarantine Maintenance Zombie Control Unit 9 and I think I'm going to stick that right here as if it's the, an official designation for this truck. Um, and I think maybe that might be, might be enough. Uh, so yeah, so I'll get those glued in place just using PVA um, and I'll bring you back for the next step when I get to it. The next little deal I'm going to do on this is with my braddle, I'm going to come along here and I'm going to put some, I probably should have done this before I glued it on to be honest, but everyone makes mistakes. So I'm going to put some bullet holes in it. So with my finger behind, I can just very, very carefully put dents into this <coughs> front panel. Like so. And they will look very much like bullet holes. They don't really show up very well on the camera, unfortunately, but they do in real life. Um, I may come along with a slightly larger tool and scrape them out a bit bigger, but I'm just going to do a few of them scattered across the front, not too many, and I may very well end up doing some in the body of the truck as well, um, just so that it looks like it's been in the wars a little bit. With a few bullet holes scattered here and there, you can actually see some along the along there, along the doorway just a bit. I'm going to start to put the female uh, guards in place. So we've got two guards. We've got this one who's human, and we've got another one who will be in the back of the, of the uh, truck, who is a android, just there. So first of all, the human guard is going to be leaning into the little gap, which is where you're climbing in and out of the cage, um, and is uh, just going to be standing there looking out forwards towards the front of where the truck is going. So 
that's where she's going to go. Um, I'm also going to stick the uh, robot on because it's time for that. So where he's going to go is if I just very quickly move the camera. Okay, so where the robot is going to go is is going to be stood just back here next to this outcropping and looking across. So exactly where, I'm not totally sure, somewhere where it'll stand up on its own, um, <clears throat> which may be quite difficult to do because it's quite rough here um, and it's not the most stable of models. I might need to employ a third hand to hold it while it dries and I might even need to pin it. But I'll come across, I'll let you know what I have to do to stick it down, but it's basically just gonna be standing somewhere around there. So I'll get those glued in and then we'll have a look at getting to work inside the actual cage of the truck. So the back of the truck. I'm going to build from the back, which is this end forwards, that's my plan, because basically because I've got everything I need to to start building this bit, and I don't have everything I need to to build the bits that are actually further up the front. So the first couple of elements, we have the dog, and we have the sleeping girl. And the dog and the sleeping girl are gonna go right at the back there. So I'm just gonna glue them in with PVA, actually. I'm not gonna use super glue for these. Don't need to. Um, and it will, it will be enough of a bond to stop it from sliding around, but it will mean that I can remove them if I wish to. So we'll slide her right in the corner. <clears throat> and then my plan is actually, let's show this. So I've got this um, IBC, which I've shown before, and that is gonna stand go next to her basically. So I will also super uh, PVA this just on the bottom of the uh, of its little stand that it's sitting on. Uh, these came from an eBay seller. If I remember, I'll pop a link in the description below. They're pretty cool. They're just 3D printed, um, but they weren't very expensive and they look great and their service was very good as well. So I always like to uh, give props where props is due for that. So there we are, that can sit there. And then that means that the dog can come in and, sh and the dog is actually gonna be just standing over the girl, like that. A very, very protective position for the dog. Um, so yeah, so I'll get those glued in. And then there's one other element which I will bring over to the table in a minute and I'll show you when I get it. So I've got some of these uh, transfers that are on this sheet here, you can see quite a lot of transfers and they're generally things like uh, warnings or danger or uh, fuel labels and I'm going to use quite a lot of them actually. Uh, I've got a little kind of like uh, briefcase here and then those um, barrels that I'm making. <clears throat> so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put this danger of death skull and crossbones thing on to the um, to the uh, suitcase, briefcase thing. So I've got some warm water. I'm not gonna film all this because uh, putting on uh, transfers I've done before, if you're not sure, what you do is you soak it in warm water, then you very carefully slide it off. Um, I have micro set and micro sol as well, which I use. So what you do is you put the micro set on first, which prepares the surface. You then transfer the transfer onto where you want it to go, and then you very carefully brush over micro sol and it works really, really well. It smooths it into any cracks, any crevices, and it makes it go on really, really nicely. So I'm gonna start on that. Um, I've, I'm gonna be putting lots and lots of transfers on, so I won't go into detail on each of those, uh, but I just thought I'd mention that. Um, and then we're gonna continue dressing the rest of the model. While we're waiting for those decals to dry, I'm gonna secure this little pistol here, which is gonna sit on top of the water barrel. So just put a little dab of super glue around that and that will then not go anywhere, that's good. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna put the sister. So this in the story in my head is the sister of the sleeping girl, the other daughter of the drivers and the, and the, and the woman in the front, the, the parents. <clears throat> and she is gonna be stood also next to her little sister who's asleep and she's acting as a guard there. So I'm gonna stick her down. I will use super glue for this because PVA, PVA will take too long to go off and I need that to be quite secure. And when these transfers have dried, and I'm possibly gonna try and make some more um, of those barrels as well out of the old curtain rail, then we'll be able to dress the rest of the back. 
So I'm going to have to stand and hold this for a bit. I might get some activator on it as well um, so, that she, so that she dries securely. And then that's going to be me done for the time being. With the guns painted and now drying, I'm now looking at how I'm going to arrange them. This is the uh, thing that I'm going to actually sit them on. Um, it's actually backwards. I'm just going to sit like that. And that will fit on top of the cab of the truck really nicely. Uh, and originally I was going to do it with just two, just two guns. So one gun there and one gun there. But what I've realised is, is that this bit of sprue here, which is actually from the guns itself, that's the thing that um, the feeds was, uh, was attached to, will actually fit between the two guns. And then when that's there, the other two guns can sit on top. And so I can have all four guns sitting on this mount. So what I'm going to do now, these are not ready to glue on because they're not wet. They're still wet, sorry, they're not dry. Is I'm going to glue this bracket down right there and let that dry. And then I'm probably going to go and give it a quick blast of some black and some silver just to make it a little bit less grey. Um, so that when I come to glue the guns on it looks pretty good. But that is just going to sit like that. <coughs> and it will allow me to mount the extra guns onto this little frame which is really cool actually I'm really pleased it's gonna look absolutely wicked so there we are I'll let that dry and then I'll go and spray it black and grey and silver um, and then I'll bring you back when I've glued them all on and show what it looks like one thing I've realized that this truck really needs is something uh, to act as uh, to help it to get out of um, any holes it gets stuck into or to get across any ravines it might come to. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to make some ramps or some uh, reinforced steel kind of girdery type things. Um, you see there's a lot there's a lot of military use them. <clears throat> and what I'm going to do is I'm going to make use of this this stuff again which is absolutely brilliant. I'm, I'm finding so much use for this right now. Um, so we'll just peel off. These are corners for reinforcing um, <coughs> excuse me, my coffee is still here, uh, for reinforcing um, plasterboard. So um, you put them in the corner and then you can plaster over it and then so you put it around the corner and then it doesn't get knocked off. So you can get these in any hardware store really. They're nice plastic, they're easy to cut. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut down the middle here somehow, probably with the saw, and then I'll probably cut it in half or, um, as well. So I'll end up with four lengths. And then I'll spray paint it black and silver as I have been with a splash of red. Um, and then that can be wired to the side of the truck um, with straps um, so that it's there and available should uh, it become necessary or needed should they ever get stuck. So I'll get so I'll, I'll, I'll show you what it looks like when it's all done. Just going to cut it down the middle, cut it in half and then spray it. So there's no point in going into more detail and showing you more than that. But that's how that's going to be done. And that'll be, some, that'll be a really nice um, kind of ramp or whatever um, that can be used for recovering the vehicle. The base has now been painted and dried. I'm quite really quite pleased with how that looks actually. It's a really nice dirty kind of colour just done with aerosols and basically what I did was I sprayed the black on and I sprayed the silver on while the black was still wet so it kind of all got combined. Now the only problem is is that I have actually obviously painted everywhere and I haven't left any spots for me to glue onto so hopefully this will still work but what I'm going to do is I'm going to glue the guns on and then when they're set then I will come along and I will glue the ammunition on so we'll be putting some super glue on the bottom of each of these guns and putting them in place now I will probably have to fiddle with this a little bit so I probably will not film the whole thing however I have worked out roughly where each lo is going to be located and I'm pretty happy with how it looks. Um, I just need to make sure that I actually get it seated properly, not pointing down too much and what have you. Um, so yeah, that's perfect now. Yeah, so I'm going to do that on all of them. I'm not going to film the lot. It's going to be a bit of a, of a, of a complex, delicate procedure, but I'll bring you back and show you what it looks like when it's finished. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to stick the final bits down in place inside the truck. So I've decided to go ahead, I'm going to maybe print out some more, I've got my 3D printer now, if I can get it working in time, then I'll print some more barrels. I might also end up cutting out some more of these tubes uh, out of the uh, curtain rail. <coughs> However, I'm pretty happy with the arrangement apart from these that are scattered a bit that I will actually tidy up. So we're going to have the two purchased oil tanks, oil drums here, 
and I'm going to stack these on top of each other which have the uh, warning um, biohazard label on them. <clears throat> um, and I might put the red one on top actually of the orange one just because it's a bit different. And then at this end I've got the hubs and the spare tyre um, and then the basically this girl here, the um, robot, the android, is going to be stood a little bit back but not very far, quite close to the grating and a little bit further towards the front. So just about there I think but I'm just like wedging her with her gun at the moment so she f leans forwards but that will be stand she'll be standing up and then that will be enough if i can get more in there i'll be happy but if i can't then i won't so i'll do that now off camera because it's going to be a lot of hands in the way like that so it'll be pointless filming it um, but yeah that's what it's going to look like and i'll bring you back and show you what it looks like when it is finished I've had my 3D printer running pretty much solidly since I got it, which I think is a common story. Uh, the second thing that I printed were these barrels, which I downloaded off Thingiverse, they were free. I will try and remember to put a link in the description below to the item. I scaled them up to be about the right size and they all came out fine. This one was damaged getting it off the base, um, it flew across the room. And, whatever, but damaged barrels in a post-apocalyptic setting. Sounds right to me. So I'm going to go and paint these up. I'm just going to do a very basic spray them black, uh, sort of prime them, spray them black, silver, and then I'll put some, um, some of my uh, transfers on them and then I'll get them arranged in the back of the truck and or scattered around the base of the terrain. So this is probably the last thing I'm going to add on. I've not got any other ideas. This is one of the things I was really looking forward to my printer for and I'm so glad it arrived in time because I've been able to do it. So yeah, some more barrels for the back of the truck. And with that, suddenly it's done. The post-apocalyptic truck shelf diorama. And I am so very, very pleased with how that looks. I really am. The truck is not glued down so I can be lifted out. The guns on the roof are not glued on. They can be taken off. because so I wasn't sure whether I wanted them or not, but now the one I like them, but I want to be able to change my mind. There is a lot of detail in this. There is a lot of things that you can spot. Um, I will take a, a number of close-up pictures which I will put on screen after this clip before I do the wrap-up so you can enjoy all the details I put into it. There will be quite a lot, so I warn you in advance that will be quite a long segment. Um, but yeah, it's been a lot of fun building this and I have learned so much and I have got a new addiction to larger scale modelling. So um, I'm looking up on my shelf um, and I have three things up there now. I have a Lotus Europa Special, I have a Jaguar E-Type and I have another canvas side truck very similar to this one um, i'm undecided whether i'm going to do another uh, post-apocalyptic with that truck but i'm certainly going to do a nice display with the lotus and the jag the jag being my dad's favorite car so that's going to be a bit of a of a tribute build but anyway let's focus on this for now that's that's one of the things i've really enjoyed i've also really enjoyed painting the larger scale miniatures so if we have a look uh, just to the left you can see the the kind of robot -y alien type thing and I had a lot of fun with silver pa silvering paints getting that looking a little bit otherworldly it was a lot of fun um, and then inside the cab you can see that we have um, some figures so there's actually a driver as well um, and this this lady is pointing the way. I've got some uh, in, some uh, stickers. So you can see here it says that this is a quarantine maintenance team. Um, and then over here we've got like a biohazard warning. Um, I'll shift the camera in a little bit so we can see inside the back of the truck. But there's quite a lot going on inside the back as well. And then over here to the right we've got a load of rubbish and detritus on the floor. Um, we've got the uh, Michelin man. <laughs> We've got a sign that says do not remove, which has obviously been removed, and then just tucked away behind the tree, we've got a crazy dude with a beheaded head. So there we are. So I'll move the camera a little bit so we can get a little bit more of a different view of it, um, and then I'll take some detailed pictures. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to go to shaky cam, which doesn't happen very often either, but it's going to make it a lot easier for me to get in and see the details. So here we've got the girl that's sleeping, and the guard dog, that's obviously her guard dog. And in my little story in my head, this red-headed one that it's refusing to focus on is the sister. Uh, let's see if we can see her through the bars. I'm not sure whether it will focus. I might need to get pictures for this, but yeah, she's looking through the bars. And then over to the right, we have one of the uh, guards in my little story in my head. These are paid guards. They're being paid to um, protect the truck um, and its inhabitants. So we've got one there and we've got one other one, which I'll show you in a minute. Then there's a bunch of barrels. Um, there's a suitcase there with a skull and crossbones on it. 
Um, we've got a single handgun just sitting on top of the IBC. Uh, we've got a spare tyre. We've got some uh, um, like planks or metal planks that will help you get over any muddy spots or across any small cracks and ravines in the roads that allows for rough roading. We've got fuel. And then you can see here, tucked away, standing on the platform, we have another of the paid guards who has stood there. Now, on the back of the cab, we have a ladder. And on top of the cab, we have these epic guns. <laughs> and that's their defense. So the idea is, is that you'll be climbing up the ladder and, um, and shooting them. And next to it is attention, shoot the zombies in the head, <laughs> just in case you forget. So as we come outside of the truck, there is a danger zombie outbreak sign pasted to that tank, to that tr trunk. And then stood next to it, we have Crazy Dude with the beheaded head, which is cool. And you can see just how much there is going on around the outside as well. So there we are, a little bit of a of shaky cam, as I say, it doesn't happen very often. Uh, but I'm really, really pleased with this. I've had a lot of fun making it, a lot of fun detailing it. And I think that it's come out really, really well. And it's going to go on the wall and um, I'll be looking at it and smiling at it a lot. So what I'll do now is get some really, really detailed photographs. I'll go put it in the light box, get some really good photographs and put them on screen for you. And then we'll wrap up. What a super fun build that proved to be. And it took me places I didn't ever expect to go. I went from being pretty much only 28 millimeters with a very few smaller scales to really falling in love with the 75 millimeter range. And up behind me on the shelf, you might just be able to see, I actually have three more kits at that scale that are waiting to be built that you'll see at some, other, some future time. And yeah, really, really enjoyed it. Also got into 3D printing and made use of it in this build, which is another departure from my previous old school methods. And I found that quite cool as well, though you did get to see some old school methods and maybe compare and contrast 3D printing to chopping up curtain rails. Anyway, I really hope you enjoyed the build. Let me know in the comments below what you thought. And uh, yeah, just make yourself known if you want to. I always love to hear from you and I always reply to everyone that comments. So I'll wrap up by saying, don't forget to subscribe. <laughs> I don't always say that, but I will now. Uh, but I do always say, and I mean it, please, stay healthy, stay safe, and stay well.